Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to convert a natural gas garage heater to burn propane. I have the conversion kit right here and it looks to all be there. This only has three burners. These are the new jets for that. And all of the stickers. So we should be good to go. First thing to do, at least on this heater, is remove the back. The burners are right, where are they? Oh, I guess we gotta remove the side. Looks like the burners are right in here. On this particular unit, I gotta remove these four screws that are holding the manifold onto the burner box. Once I get these screws off, this is just gonna tip right back. This is a little heater. They can have anywhere, well, in this model, they can have anywhere from, uh, I should take this off too. Uh, maybe I can get at these. They'll have anywhere from three to eight of these jets, but I'm hoping this little one will heat the place. I believe it will. This is a uh, Mr. Heater Big Max. Trying to figure out what size these nuts are. I believe it's a 12 millimeter. And there you have it. Let's compare these. That is the new jet, the one with the much smaller hole. We'll get the last of these off. Before we put the new ones in, yeah, I can take these wires off if I want, but we'll leave them on for now. That's what's holding this in place here. Once this is converted over, you need to test this with a gauge and test it for leaks. But unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that in this video. I have to get this converted and installed on the ceiling and connected to the gas supply before the propane company will turn on the gas to this building. So, once they turn on the gas to the building, they'll do the test, and then after that, I'll do the test on here and set everything correctly, so that'll be in a different video. And once I make that video, I'll link it below. That's two. So it's gonna be a little harder. all of the old ones, the natural gas ones. Now, we'll get these propane ones in here. There we go. And these are stamped on the side. And when you get your furnace, they'll have a chart that shows you the correct jets to put on here. I'll show you these. Not sure if you'll be able to see that or not, but 
it's stamped on the side. So you match them up to what it says should be in there for either natural gas or for propane. But if you use their conversion kit, the conversion kit the company sells, that should be correct. And like I showed you before, the quick test is just to look at the size of the orifices. Your propane conversion orifices should be a good deal smaller than the natural gas ones. Alright. Now we got to remove the cap from the adjustment screw on the valve here. Now inside there, there's a regulator adjustment screw and it looks like it's Torx but it looks like it will work with a, a regular screwdriver as well. Let me get my parts out of here. That's what it looks like. The one down in there is white. Let's see. Yeah, it's got a slot for a screwdriver, but it's a good deal bigger than the tip that's on here. Let me see if I can find a tip for this. Otherwise, I have a Torx that'll work on that. All right, I just found a wider blade that'll work in there. So, we'll remove that one. And then get down in there and remove the adjustment screw down in there. Almost out. It's kind of hard to see what's going on down there. Unfortunately, I don't have the best lighting out here in the shop because the shop's not done yet. And my temporary lighting is mounted to the ceiling. All right, there we go. There's the old one. Put that with the junk stuff. Then there's a spring in there. I'm going to have to get a needle nose to get that out. The spring has to come out as well. Hopefully this works. Otherwise, I have uh, four sips across the street in the machine shop. Oh, I had it. That is the spring. gather together all my new stuff. The old stuff is all either silver or white and the new spring is like a copper color and all the other stuff is black. All right, I'm going to put the new spring in there. It's a very delicate spring. All right, then the adjustment screw. Might have to start this down in there. 
We'll see. There we go. And again, once the gas company turns on the gas, I will have to test all this stuff. And what I'm doing right now is tightening this all the way down till it stops. And then I believe I'm going to be loosening it one and a half turns, but I'll check that. It's either one and a half or one and a quarter. And when I do that, I'll turn off the ratcheting on this screwdriver and I'll put a little mark on the top so I can see what I'm doing. I believe we're there. Don't want to overdo it. Because it's plastic. I'm bottoming out. Hmm. I might have to get a different screwdriver. Test this on the other one. All right, it will work. All right, and this one's square, so we're going to turn this out one and a half turns. There's my mark. That's one. And that is a half. Now, got a little O-ring, and that goes on this cap. Come on. There we go. I don't know if I mentioned it before, I believe I did, but when this is hooked up to the gas, I have to go over all this stuff and check for leaks as well. Now, we'll tighten this manifold back up. Okay, that's going to wrap up part one, the physical install of the propane conversion parts. The next thing I got to do is get this thing installed, hang it from the ceiling there, connect it to the propane line, then notify the propane company they're going to come and turn on the propane. They don't want to turn on the propane until this is physically installed and hooked up. They're going to do a leak test. Once that's done, I'll come back and we got two ports here, one right here and one right here. I'm going to run a manometer on both of these and check the pressures. You'll see that in the next video. I'll put the stickers on as well. The gas pressure is adjusted by the screw that I just put in there. I'll have to take that cap back off and adjust that up or down or leave it alone, depends on what the gas pressure is. And once that's done, 
I'll have to go over the whole thing. Well, everything I touched for the most part and test it for leaks. If there's no leaks, it's all done and I'll put the back on it. So I will link to part two once I make part two. I'll link to that in the description below. If you don't see a link there, the video is probably not made yet, but as soon as the video is done, I'll link it there. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.